Now, it was only just a few days ago, I was thinking, where am I going to store this Bismarck while we're making the case? Because clearly I can't just leave it here on the table. It's going to end up getting getting damaged and scuffed and and I want to use this table to uh, lay out the, the, uh, the case on while I'm assembling it. I think it's going to be big enough. And the thought flashed through my mind. Well, I can set it on top of the piano. Now, I want to emphasize it flashed through my mind. It probably only lasted a nanosecond or two. And the reason for that is I gave the piano away over four years ago. Uh, yeah. However, I, I will find a place and uh, we have to determine what is going to be the, the minimum uh, size that we can make this thing. And uh, I mean the, the inside of the case. And I'm talking about the width now. And uh, okay, here's, here's my thinking on this and I think I've uh, I alluded to that before. The uh, we're going to be getting all okay. The Bismarck we've just completed. We're going to start on the hood. Uh, the Rodney. Well, maybe we'll get to it. There is the slight possibility, but probably not. The Trumpeter will make a Yamato. Now the Yamato is only, as far as the model would go, be only about this much longer than the hood. Surprisingly, we think of the Yamato as being a huge thing. And, and it was a huge thing, but it wasn't really that much longer than, than the hood. The, uh, the length of the hood, and I got, got this all off Wikipedia, the, the length of the hood was uh, 860 feet, and the length of the Yamato was only 862 and 10 inches. So call it 863. So in other words, the Amato was only just under three feet longer than the hood was. Now, where the, where the, um, what the Amato had way over the hood was, it was a lot wider, a lot heavier, and a lot more heavily armed. But I don't think it went as fast as the hood. According to the statistics here, the, the fastest the hood would go was was uh, 32 knots or 37 miles per hour. That's a tremendous speed for a large ship. Uh, now the Amato uh, had a top speed. Let's see if I can find it here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, 31 miles an hour. So there's there's quite a quite a difference. But the the hood was a long, sleek uh, uh, speed machine. I guess maybe that's why they call it a battle cruiser, and the Yamato was considered a battleship. However, uh, the, the, in all likelihood, we will never see a one to two hundred scale Yamato on this model table. Uh, I don't know if uh, Trumpeter is thinking of building it. I, I don't know why. I, it, it seems to me they don't have any Japanese ships. Um, so I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, be interesting to know what's behind it because <clears throat> they've they've done a dozen one two hundred scale ships. The Titanic being the last one. Um, yeah, that's it's kind of strange, isn't it? Anyway, they're not going to tell us, and we're not going to know. And it could well be that by the time I'm done with the Rodney, which would be probably three years down the road, well, when it would be done. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm rambling here. So the, the minimum that we want to make, have the inside of the case for width to accommodate the length of these ships, and, and I've, I've drawn them out here to, to scale, you can see that the Rodney, you know, it's not a whole lot uh, smaller than, than, the, uh, than the Yamato. Well, it is, I guess. Anyway. Like I say, I'm rambling here. So, so the, the minimum that it has to be would be to uh, accommodate the Amato uh, plus maybe, oh, an inch. In other words, if it accommodates the hood, it's going to accommodate the Amato. 
<laughs> Let's put it that way. My goodness, Ron. All of that to simply say, if we make it big enough to fit the hood, it'll fit the Yamato. Okay, let's stop messing around here. If we know that the length of the Yamato model, if they make it, which they probably won't, is probably going to be approximately 1325 millimeters long. If they make it. Heavy on the if. Okay, so. <clears throat> All right, 1300 and 25 millimeters is 52 and a quarter inches. So I would say if I was to make the inside of the display case, the, the plexiglass, I don't know what to call it, a shield or something, this part right here, if the inside was 52 and a quarter inches, it should fit. Uh, is that what we came to? Um, Okay, 1325, there's 13, 25, 53. So, 53, I better write that down. So the minimum that we want to make the inside from here to here is 53 inches. Okay, does that make sense? Sort of. Now, plexiglass comes in 48 inch widths and different different lengths. Uh, but you can buy it, like I mentioned before, about the same size as a sheet of plywood, 48 by 96. Now, I'm, I'm using the uh, imperial measurements here because the, the lumber stores here in Winnipeg, at least the last time I was there, you go in and you buy almost everything uh, the old the old-fashioned way by inches two by fours four by eight sheets of plywood that sort of thing um, so as far as I know they're still doing it that way I haven't bought anything for a year or two but uh, if, if we were to take and have our plexiglass uh, 48 inches high I think that would be large enough to accommodate uh, four ships one on top of the other you know I should measure that how how high is it from the from the keel to the top of the mast I have not done that let's do it that tapping sound that you hear I got my windows open sounds like a kid bouncing a basketball on the street doesn't it well that's exactly what it is Now this is not rocket science. I guess we can figure about 11 and a half inches or maybe a little better. Now, I can't tell you how sick I am of having to repair stuff. I, this little part right here, I'll move in so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, I broke it off and I just had to glue it on. And just a moment ago, I noticed that I have, uh, on the bow, I've damaged the railing. I've, I've got to get this thing out of here and uh, into another room. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, I don't know what I caught on this thing. Maybe my fingers? To straighten out that post. You know, I think I'm just going to repair this off camera as best I can and uh, get this model into the storage room where it's safe. It's not that it is damaged beyond repair, it's just that if 
fortunately photo etch you know it, it bends and you can straighten it out well like I said I'm just going to do it off camera and get it out of here Is it as good as it was before? Well, probably not. However, at a normal viewing distance, as I've said so many times before, you can't see it anyway. Now this is the second attempt to get it into the storage room in the back of the house. And, uh, yeah, the first time around I went and I washed my hands with hot soapy water so I didn't get any grease on the uh, flat paint of the hull and I'm being extra careful and I reach underneath extra careful to pick it up. I grabbed it by the bow with one hand and uh, that is underneath and uh, held on to the bulbous bow part. It was actually made a nice little handle. And when I reached underneath with my left hand very carefully I accidentally bumped one of those little platforms that comes down the side of the ship. Well, of course it broke off. Had to fix it. It was an easy fix. But just exasperating. I'm telling you, exasperating. As you can see, our Bismarck is keeping my winter tires company. But if I don't hurry up, the summer tires are going to be sitting there and the winter tires are going to be back on the car. Yeah, gotta get this case done. It has been about a year and a half since our Bismarck has not been adorning our model table. At least a year and a half. It looks kind of bare, doesn't it? Now my plan is to draw everything out here in Corraldra right to the millimeter. Then I can go down into my workshop and cut everything to the exact size, bring the parts upstairs, and assemble them up here. There is no way that I'm going to be able to get the case up the stairs. It would be just too big. And even if it would fit up the stairs, I don't know if I have the strength anymore. So I'm going to do it this way. Uh, yeah, in the meantime, thanks for watching. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. And we'll see what we've come up with in Corel Draw here.